start. Um, you know, only only Kim could get me to travel with my ex-wife. <laughs> um, part of the beauty of Kevin Sharp. I just wanted to give a brief explanation of, uh, of what happened with our encounter. Most of you know the story, and I'm not going to go into great detail, but um, I got quite a bit of credit today, but it was a team effort. And uh, my now ex-wife, Linda, and I were the first to receive Kevin and his father and his sister at our home, and that one-hour meeting turned into a 20-year friendship. And um, of course, he was very weak when he first came to me. Um, and then he made a cassette tape, back in the day of the cassette tape. Yes. I put it in, I said, no, go home and work on your craft. He sent me the tape, I threw it in a box, uh, and uh, my sister James, who is here, where is James? Right there, my sister James, two years after our first encounter with Kevin, was going through my cassettes and found the cassette that Kevin had sent me and said, you should listen to this because this guy's really good. And I said, well, honestly, I don't even know if that boy is still alive because when I saw him last, he was in very rough shape. Well, cut to, we, we phoned, we found out he was very much alive, he was in remission, he was singing strong. Um, we brought him down to California. My sister found all those songs that are on that album. This man here, Chris Farron, produced that record. I'd love to say I produced it, but I did not produce it. Um, so I guess I'm the mentor, uh, along with my ex-wife Linda. Chris is the producer, and my sister James was the A&R person um, to make that incredible record. And we're going to attempt to do that song that you all spoke of that went to number one for four weeks. But the important thing that I wanted to say, and I, I'm very glad and honored that I get to say this, even though I've just sort of off the mic, but I'm just going to keep going. Um, uh, you know, the music business is a strange and tricky animal, and you can sort of kick a door down for somebody, but you cannot make people love something. You cannot, no matter how much money you throw at something, you cannot make people pick up the phone and go, I want to hear that song. So all of the stuff that happened after our encounter was because of Kevin's talent and the talent of Chris, my sister James, and the, this team that put together, everybody needs a team. But he earned it 100%. You know, unfortunately, the world is not a place where because you're a cancer survivor, you're going to get a lot of sympathy in the music world. You're just, it's, it's a good story for a minute, but then the real talent has to kick in. And Kevin Sharp had the real talent. And the most important and beautiful thing about Kevin Sharp was that he paid it forward. He paid that day in the studio with me forward a thousandfold. And so the world is a better place for Kevin. I know you all agree. We are going to attempt. Chris and James, my sister, made a beautiful record, of course, with Kevin. He was the singer on the star, and uh, he let us know that. But that's okay. <laughs> uh, no, he remained truly a beautiful friend and, and, uh, and humble, as you all know. But anyway, we're going to attempt to do that song that stayed at number one for four weeks. Uh, I don't know if we should use, use the mic or not, because uh, maybe somebody could just hold the mic like, like here. here. So we get a little of the piano, a little of the guitar, a little of the... Do you want a... Uh, I'm just going to put my... Or you want to sit up? Okay. Put it right there. All right. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to do this song justice because Kevin owned this song. He did a great... And uh, Dana and I haven't even played this song in 15 years. Ago, That's right. So. But this is Kevin. This is for you, buddy.